Welcome back if you've been here before. And if you're new here, my name is Rachel and this is What's for Dinner. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done. All the good times just begun. What we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright It doesn't get any easier than hot dogs and mac and cheese. On Monday, it was um, my son's birthday dinner. We were having company this day, so I'm once again putting a crock pot liner into my slow cooker. And then I'm just adding some country ribs right in. Um, and then I'm just going to season up this first layer. I am making two packages. I have a large package and a small package. And all I'm doing for seasoning is garlic powder and seasoning salt. And then I'm just pouring a bottle of bullseye barbecue sauce. My husband picked this uh, barbecue sauce up at Dollar General. It seems like I remember this from my childhood. <laughs> so it's still around. I hadn't heard about it in a while, but it's still out there, I guess. So I'm just putting that other layer of country style ribs right on top of that one. And I'm seasoning that layer as well, just so that they are all nice and seasoned and really flavorful. And then I have my second bottle of barbecue sauce and I'm putting that right on top. We made a ton of ribs. And this was a Monday, so it was also a work day. And I mean, who has company and feeds people right after work? I guess I do. So to go with our ribs after I got home from work, I'm just making what I call a dump salad. So that is where you take everything you have and just throw it all together. That's pretty simple. So I have a little bit of a hodgepodge salad going on. I had a couple random bags of croutons and a couple different salad dressings. I used some leftover shredded lettuce as well as a bagged Asian salad kit and all of the ingredients that came with that. I also threw in some mozzarella cheese because I had a partial bag in the refrigerator and I put in some of those real bacon pieces. Here is my beautiful granddaughter's uh, Joey and she's getting so big and starting to crawl and we had cheesecake for dessert for my son's birthday which Joey really loved. And here is my finished plate. We just had some store-bought potato salad, that salad that I made, and the ribs for dinner. I'm frying up some hamburger steaks. I'm just gonna season them with some garlic powder and some black pepper. And once I get them cooked on both sides, I'm gonna throw them into the crock pot. I just got the call to come into work early today, so I'm trying to hurry and get this done. It's Tuesday, so Tuesday has been one of those up in the air kind of days lately, where in the past I've always tried to get something made in the crock pot so that while I'm not home, there is something for dinner. And then that's gotten away from me lately just because we get busy in life. And so my goal was to get back into the habit of making something up in the crock pot so that we're not going out to eat or ordering food, bringing it home. So even though I'm in a super big hurry right now, 
I figured I could get these cooked up really quick within a matter of like 15 minutes or so. Throw them into the crock pot, let them finish cooking, and then Bill can finish by making up some instant mashed potatoes or something to go with them, and they'll have a nice dinner later. So, yeah, I'm just in a really big hurry, like I said, trying to get this done in about 15 minutes. My dogs are outside using the potty, and as soon as I get them in and get this meal put together in the crock pot, I'm out of here and going to work. All right, next I'm just getting a onion cut up and I'm gonna throw that in with the hamburger patties. I've got a container of portobello mushrooms already cleaned and chopped up. So glad I bought those. I looked at them and thought, hmm, sometimes getting the already prepared veggies save a little bit of time and sometimes, like today, to use just an extra few minutes. Oops, hitting that camera tripod. So I'm just going to toss these big old chunks of onion right into the pot with these hamburger steaks. I've got a big bottle or container of brown gravy that I've been using for quite a while on everything, so we'll just throw that in too. And call it good. Alright, this might be kind of a weird angle, but bear with me. So what I'm doing first is just kind of guessing at about how much brown gravy mix to put in the bottom of the crock pot. And then I'm going to add a little bit of water, All right, about a half a cup. And then just start layering these hamburger patties in. And they are nice and browned on both sides, but probably not cooked all the way through. But that's okay because they've got all day to finish cooking. But this way, since they have that nice sear on each side, it's going to hold them together. Otherwise, we would just have crumbled up brown meat at the end of the day. But we don't want that. So I'm just going to throw this one on top. more of that brown gravy. Alright, so more water. Yes, I am using a coffee cup. <laughs> A little more water. I'm gonna do just a little more garlic powder just so that the mushrooms and onions have some of that garlic taste too. And I'm gonna put a lid on, put it on the lowest setting and walk away and leave it all day and that's dinner. Now if Bill manages to send me a picture or a video later of his plate, then I'll share it with you. If not, then this is dinner. <laughs> it's the best it's going to get on a Tuesday. Here I am cooking anyway. We are just cooking up breakfast for dinner, which didn't really sound so good to me. I mean, it did because I do love breakfast, but 
at the same time it was just so hot that I just wanted to get dinner done and over with and so the plan was to make dinner and then take it up to the bedroom to eat because we only have air conditioning in our bedrooms and it was way too hot downstairs so I am just getting some sausage patties cooked up and I have another skillet that I added some hash browns to my husband was sweet enough to go to the store and get some hash browns after he got out of work and so he had everything ready for me when I got home so that I could make up dinner really quickly and I just got everything cooked up and um, then I started working on getting some sausage gravy uh, made to go with this I'm making like a breakfast bowl so we are having sausage patties but I'm also leaving a couple of these patties in the pan with the grease so that I can chop them up into smaller pieces and then make some sausage gravy as well to go on top of our breakfast bowls and I'm just getting a um, scooper this is a quarter cup scooper so I'm just uh, putting two scoops of flour into my sausage and grease so about a half a cup and then I'm just gonna cook that until all of that flour is cooked in with that grease and uh, you just want that flour taste to be gone you don't want that to, um, nasty taste to be left in your gravy so after it's all coated and cooked in then I just covered my sausage pieces with milk and then added some salt and pepper and then I just stirred it in and let it get bubbly I'm cooking some eggs for cam and then I will also make some runny eggs for Bill and myself and Dawson and so like I said that yeah, um, sausage is just sitting and bubbling I made some toast and of course those hash browns are nice and golden so then I started layering everything into my bowl at some point my battery does die so I did lose some of the um, end of what this bowl turned out to be so basically I'm just ripping up my pieces of toast I like to have my gravy over toast and I'm just putting that on one side I have my hash browns and eggs on the other and then here is me having breakfast for dinner in bed <laughs> so that was actually kind of fun although quite necessary as it was just so sweltering hot and we wanted to go up in our nice cool air-conditioned bedroom and have our dinner on this night. On Thursday it was another sweltering hot day so I absolutely refused to cook again and demanded to be taken out for Chinese food okay so it wasn't that dramatic but yes I did suggest going out and we had the whole restaurant to ourselves so that was nice for our dinner for Friday I am cleaning up this cabbage that I got out of our garden. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's dirty, but it's absolutely beautiful. So I'm just peeling off those outer leaves and the stem, and then I'm gonna give it a nice shower with some cold water and get all of that dirt out from in between these leaves. It, cabbage is actually pretty easy to clean as it's you know once you get the few loose leaves on the outside everything else is closed up tight so there wasn't that much dirt just on the outside so after i get that cleaned up i'm just going to get it chopped into smaller bite-sized pizzas and i am making a recipe that i saw on my friend tina's channel her channel is called tina tackles it and i was really amazed at the way that she made her um cabbage and meatballs I think she called it um, unstuffed cabbage rolls something like that I'll link her channel in my description box so you can see how she made it 
and of course I will change it up for my family's taste just a little bit as far as the seasonings go and um, here is my cabbage it's ready to go so we're just gonna get that all chopped up and then I'll get some meatballs going too and so for my meatballs I'm just adding some garlic powder and some uh, dried onions some pepper and I know that looks like a lot but I like a lot and then I'm just putting in some of the minute rice that's just so that it cooks up really quick and then I added two eggs to this I can't remember if I if Tina did it this way or not but I I usually add an egg to my meatballs so that's just what I did I probably did not need two eggs that's for sure but it was okay it worked out and so I'm just going to give that a mix with my hands and get all of my meatballs formed. And then because I will go the extra mile for my picky kids, I am making two kinds of meatballs on this night. So after I get this version made, I will show you how I made just some regular meatballs. And um, just because I know that they don't like cabbage. And so I'm making some in like a marinara sauce for them. For the other meatballs, I'm just seasoning them the same with the dried onions, the garlic powder, the salt and pepper, and an egg. I'm also putting in some Italian seasoned breadcrumbs, and then I'm just going to get those all mixed up with my hands and then get them made into balls as well, and then set them on this baking sheet until I'm ready to put them into the sauce. When my cabbage was all chopped up, I just added it to a pot of boiling um, salt water and got that started cooking. Then I chopped up a white onion and a couple of bell peppers. These are just bell peppers. They're not spicy or hot. those onions and peppers right into the pot with the cabbage and the water and then put the lid on so that it could all steam. Once the cabbage was nice and soft I just poured out about half of the liquid 
and then I added a couple of big spoonfuls of tomato paste. This would be about the size of one small can. I did have a larger can of tomato paste, so I'm only using about half of it. And I'm just gonna get that all mixed in really good. Next, I added a little bit of Italian seasoning. and about two tablespoons of minced garlic. I also added some black pepper. And we like crushed red pepper flakes. Next, I added the uncooked meatballs right into the broth. And this is the step that I was really inspired by when I saw Tina make these. And you may want to use a... Um, leaner beef when you make this if you don't want a lot of um, grease drippings in your cabbage dish. So I think I'm using like a 85-15 so I did have some grease but we didn't mind. It did taste okay and it wasn't very much for this one. And here is what those meatballs and this cabbage look like when it was all done. It was so delicious and very flavorful and I really liked that I could make it all in one pot. And for the second dish I'm using this large can of tomato sauce and then I added about a half of the can of water. I'm also adding some diced tomatoes and green chilies and then I am going to add some Italian seasoning and a little too much came out. At first I thought it would just be okay and then I decided that I had to do something about that. I did mix in two big teaspoons of minced garlic and then I just came back in with my spoon and just kind of scooped some of that Italian dressing out and um, just to kind of fix it a little because I think I got too much in there. So then I added the remaining minced onions into the pot as well and gave it all a stir. Oh, and here I am adding, shh, don't tell anyone, a couple spoonfuls of brown sugar. And then I added my uncooked meatballs right into that sauce. And then I'm going to cover that um, pan and let those cook up in that sauce. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright Crazy, but things 
things are finally right With you and I the future is bright You and I we got it We don't need no more Even in the hard times And finally, it's Saturday, the end of the week for us as far as our dinner recipes go. And we had Subway and Doritos. So although I did have a plan, we don't always stick to the plan, man. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just how it is. And we ended up getting Subway for dinner just because... We wanted something cold. I had a steak sub with all kinds of stuff on it. I had some tomatoes, some banana peppers, some mayonnaise. And that's it for this week's What's for Dinner. If you had fun here today, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.